Hello, we're going to speak about steganography today. I'm John Steiner, and uh, as a part of the course uh, CSC 245, we're going to speak about the history, importance, and, dem and do a demonstration on steganography. Brief little history. Uh, well, first, steganof steganography has nothing to do with the stegosaurus in no way. But it does come from the Greek etymology of steganos, meaning covered, concealed, or protected, and graphene, which means writing. The definition from Merriam-Webster Dictionary is the art or practice of concealing a message, image, or file within another message, image, or file. It can really be done in any direction like that. It's been used for centuries. The ancient Greek example that I use is a, they would write a message on a piece of wood then cover it with wax and a innocent message would then be written on top of the wax. This was wax tablets they used and then whoever uh, needed the hidden message could melt the wax off and then get the hidden message from that. More he recent history shows spies using methods such as microdots. Microdots are wee little, about the size of a typewriter period and uh, it was photographic images compressed down into a microscopic form on there. Microdots are also used, which a lot of people don't know about, but stun guns, the not the small ones, but the ones that actually project the uh, electric cables. Uh, when the cables launch, the microdots with serial information so they can track the owner and manufacturer disperse all over the ground. But now the digital age is here, and we have a whole new world of steganography. We have uh, advanced technology. It can be fun, but it's also dangerous. Payloads are common carried by uh, JPEG images, audio files, and video files. The payloads uh, could be something fun like secret messages to friends, or it could be uh, dangerous stuff like malicious code linked to malicious websites or even uh, digital contraband, like uh, people could be sending um, stolen data through the uh, images. Now, there are many tools. Uh, you surf the web, you can find all kinds of tools, just like we found for other parts of this course. Um, and some of them are paid, some of them are free, and uh, various ones are more complicated to use than others. Uh, the tools we're going to use today is uh, Hide and Send, which is a basic, very basic steganography and coding and decoding tool. And uh, briefly show you one called Image Steganography, which is another tool. And then we're also going to use a hex editor called HXD. And you'll see in a little bit how uh, the hex editor comes into play for analyzing pictures. And I'll have in my video description on YouTube, there'll be links to all these sources. Okay, and here on the screen now, you'll see uh, hide and send. And on the right, and uh, image steganography on the left. The uh, reason I wanted to show you image steganography uh, this one has multiple options for uh, in encode and decode, and is just putting the or extracting it in. And encryption, you can encrypt it with heavier encryption. And this is neat because instead of uploading a file, you can actually right here in this middle block just type in a text message, and that text is what will become the hidden uh, payload. We are not going to use this one, however. We're going to use hide and seek. Now I will show you here, demonstrate how to actually do this. You're going to find yourself a photo. There we go. And what we got here is uh, three photos that I took and I'm going to make a copy. So we're going to click this uh, hide tab up here, pick our photo, which I'm going to pick this copy that I made, and then pick the file that we want to conceal in here. This one you cannot type, you know, in text, you would have to actually use like a file that you created from text. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to actually um, find a file. In this case, it's going to be a text file. Click hide. I'm going to just make up a password. One, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Hit OK. 
data successfully hidden. And that's really all there is to it. Now, as you can see, the text file is not on this screen. So what I'm going to do is actually get that back by opening up Hide and Send again. And on click the extract. And now we'll go to the folder demonstration here. Get that photo cleaned copy. That was the one that I hit it in. I'm just going to extract straight to the desktop. Password, hit OK. Data successfully extracted. And now you see on the screen is the message, which was just a brief notepad message I made about steganography. So it works. Now what I want to show you is how we can take and analyze this with the uh, hex editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the original. This was the absolute original. Open that with the hex editor. And then I'm going to go to analysis and file compare. And this is where I'm going to go back to the desktop. And I'm going to take, I made an exact duplicate of the original. So I'm going to open that and it will actually tell me the chosen files are identical. Now, this is good because I know what the original was. So if somebody sent me this other one and it said that right away, I know there's not, no problems. But what we're going to do actually is something a little different. We're going to open the original, the absolute original. And I want to show you here to compare it to the one called photo cleaned. Notice it didn't come up and say they're identical because they are not. And if you look here, you can actually see differences in the text section. I mean, if you can read uh, hex code, you can see differences there too. But over here, like if you look where it said JFIF, look down below that, and you can see where some of these other, this other data has changed. And of course, this file is huge, so you could look all through it and see stuff. Now, a even bigger difference, what we're going to do is, this is the original. We're going to compare to the one that we, the one called cleaned copy. That is the one that we actually put our payload in. Now you can see a lot of differences here. And if we expand this to 512, and 512 on the lower one. Brings up a lot more data in one screen. Let me get over here a little ways. But you can see here, get the other one over. You can see here right away, many differences. This is the original on top. And this one on the bottom is the cleaned one that has been uh, has the payload in it. Now, the reason I named this clean also is because I wanted to show you how you can the metadata that shows up. I actually cleaned some of it out using the metadata tool on Windows, um, and that also made changes. Now, another way that you can actually embed information in an image. Using an editor like this, let me shrink this back down because it's be easier. I can go into this editor and actually type in a message like I did right there. And it changes the data over here. This is not very effective because it is not encrypted in any way. And uh, it also, if you pick the wrong blocks to change, it can cause problems and corrupt the image and then the image may not even open. But I just wanted to 
show you that that could be done. Now, now what I also wanted to show you is these two images. The one with the payload and the one without the payload. Oops. Hold on. Well, here, I'll do it this way. And Okay. As you can see, there's virtually no uh, difference between the two photos. Even though there's a message embedded in it. The way they do this is the algorithms actually take and find the least uh, important data, the bytes from the, the different colors that are redundant, and replaces them with the information that you're wanting to hide. Okay, now for a lab, we're going to have two different labs. The first one here, um, what you're going to do is, using these instructions, pause it here so that you can do this. Um, there's a link to uh, Flickr in the description below the video, and you're going to take and get Antelope 1 and Antelope 2 pictures. I've already manipulated one of these pictures to have a hidden payload. The other is an original. Now, what I want you to do is download and install Hide and Seek, and you can use the HXD um, hex editor if you'd like, or you can use one of you, you know, if you already have one you like to use. But you download these and then actually download the antelope pictures using hide and send, extract the payload. From Well, first you have to determine which one has the payload. But then you'll extract it using the password 1234. And when you're completed, press play on the video and continue on to the second lab. Okay, now you've continued on. And uh, if you've completed it correctly, you should have now have a copy of this actual PowerPoint presentation that goes along with the video. Now for lab two, this one's on your own. You're going to uh, use the tools or use any other tool that you'd like if you find one that you prefer and uh, hide your own payload in an image of your choice. Compare that original image to the steganographic image in a hex editor just so that you can see the difference after you've done it and then extract the payload to ensure that your process works. And this will give you a better understanding how it works, and then uh, you'll be able to play with the tools and learn a lot more from them. Now, some notes, uh, just to keep in mind and summarize, it is very important to know about steganography. It is part of the security realm. Uh, it can be used for um, being like a spy and sending information, or one thing that's important is we as security professionals have to know how to use this kind of uh, technology to find where people are doing uh, malicious activities. Uh, it's very dangerous, very high malicious potential. Uh, it's tough to intercept, but it can be fun like a digital scavenger hunt. Um, keep in mind that uh, there could be malicious code hidden in a photo or other data, or even just a link to another uh, website, that maybe a phishing website to try to get into your computer. So there's a lot to think about with this and a uh, lot of information to research uh, on your own in the future to learn more about steganography. Thank you.